this week's War for Chips, we are at Rotec Engineering. Now, we've visited these guys numerous times over the years, and it's always a delight to come and see them. We're going to find out how they're investing, not only to keep up with the competition, but to keep ahead of the competition. But one thing I need to note is reception area. Yes, it is, in, it is changing. The lift is now working. They have got some stairs in place. I say stairs, there's one, two, three. So in a few years' time, this will probably be finished, but their main sort of focus is on the machine shop. So let's go inside, find out what, why, and how they've been investing to keep ahead of the game. This is going to be an interactive show because Chris has got his funky new camera. Does he know how to work it? Well, we'll put it to the test. We're going to do different cells, so five axis machining, fixed head, sliding head and things like that. So first of all, this is Ollie who runs a five axis machining centre. His, his baby, this is what he started with, the DMU50, DMG Mori. You can see their machining way. The downside is at Rotec, we can't show a lot of these parts because of NDAs, but he absolutely loves this big working envelope, single knuckle. He, he cut his teeth on this programming here. Yeah, it took him a while to get used to it, but now he's got used to it, absolutely loves it. So, moving on, that's the first one, about seven years old. They now have five five-axis DMG Morris, so the CMX50U, you can see that working away there. Again, not too close, Chris, because we'll get told off due to NDAs. But if we, we can't do every single DMG Morris, because we will be here all day. Come on, Chris, keep up, keep up. But key to what these guys do is automation. Now, here we have a robot arm from Halter. You can see the configuration there not working at the moment we'll come to that later on another one but in this eco mill 1100v three axis machine they can go full four axis but the benefit of this machine is huge huge working envelope so you've got three devices in there clearly you can get even more or one big component so gives you lots of flexibility in terms of size of parts now moving on to the next machine look at this twin knuckle super powerful so you're getting real rigidity and look at the size of c axis on that so you, it's only a small part at the moment but some big, big parts if required. And again, control panel, absolutely love it, interactive. So, car moving on swiftly. Fixed head turning there, or mill turn, we're gonna leave that one, we're gonna come back. Come on, Chris, come on, concentrate. You're losing, losing it now, mate, come on. So, their latest acquisition, don't get too close, bloody hell, making me look slow. 60 tools, what is it? DMG Mori, DMU 50. So, in here, what they've done is, let me take a breath, because I'm exhausted, Chris is working hard, that spindle, 20,000 RPM. Can you run that all day, every day, every day? No, because it's going to heat up. You are wrong. You can run it all day, every day, because it's got a cooling system in there, so they can run it. And this is key to what Rotec want to do. So it might not be that they do it the quickest cycle time, but they do it 24-7, which is key to keeping them efficient and cost-effective. What have they also got? Look at that in terms of access. So you can get to both sides there. Huge, huge knuckle, full five-axis machining. And you'll see what's going on here. You've got the Araya system, and that ties in nicely with, I won't do the big reveal yet, so back off, Chris. Control panel again, the sell-off system. Oliver says interactive, intuitive, really simple to use. Again, it loves it because of that nature, amongst many other things. But they have gone, you've seen robot arms, in there, the PH150. So application-specific, they've gone the 10 pallet system, so you can have 10 jobs all the same, or 10 different jobs. This machine will run those all day, every day, over the weekend, so you're making money. Nice and simple, he says. And things, simple things like, if a tool breaks, right, we'll stop machining that component, we'll move on to the next one. But, and Oliver, who runs Ollie, Oliver, this here, Lang work holding system, in his words, a game changer. Now, he might think, game changer? It's a work holding solution, but very, very simple. If you've got a vice on, you might have a stop. Here, you've actually got an external stop. You pop your component in there, you stamp it. They only need three mil, so holding on to not a lot of material there. So in terms of, at the moment, obviously material is costing a lot, so that's good. Tough material. Also, you can change the force on it, so you don't get deflection when you're machining. So you can change the force. So if it's aluminium, you might not go in so hard. But then, key to this is, you've got your marks there, into here and then you set it, that's it, you set your datum pretty much, and you can see I've actually positioned that incorrectly because that's a bit smaller than that side, so we just shift it over one, one bit, and there it is, correct. Brilliant, so nice and simple. We've done a separate video on that, and Oliver, Ollie, keep calling him Oliver, he's not, he's not part of Charles Dickens, is he? Anyway, moving on, 
and people are diving out of the way. This is a working machine shop, so if they're diving out of the way, they don't want to be on camera. We won't ask them why they don't want to be on camera, but anyway, next we have some NLX 2500 700s, two different configurations. We've just walked, walked, walked past one. Now, the slight difference is it's got a conveyor down the bottom to remove those parts. This one hasn't, so I've just confused poor old Chris there. Sorry, Chris, but that's just the way it rolls. Bar loader there, 80 mil bar through the through the spindle there. Now the spindle's 11 kilowatts, sorry, 18.5 and then 11 kilowatts, so super powerful. But look at that turret up there. That is a beast. Now I'm just, correct me if I'm wrong, 12 stations, but driven tooling, 5.5 kilowatts running through those driven tooling. So you are taking big, big cuts of machine. Now we asked the operator who has scarpered, why he likes this machine? Keeping it simple, controls, programming. Really, really easy to use. So there you have it. And DMG Mori, if you think you can't afford one, think again, because they've got some great finance packages at the moment, but you need to get in contact with the guys. Now, next, bought, paid for, not working at the moment, but an absolute workhorse, sheer on, but what it's got in here, it's all about automation again. First of all, your micro lock system, you're seeing a lot of these out and about, so very simple to use, rigid, accurate repeatal. It's as simple as that, but twin pallet system. So you load up your micro locks outside, Machine's running, although this is going to be a bit of a refurb at the moment, but more than paid for itself in the 14 years they've had it. Microlock system in there, that's a sheer on. Let's move on. Come on, Chris. Come on, keep up. Now, we haven't shown you too many of the parts because of NDAs and things like that, but you're thinking smaller parts, but they also machine bigger parts here. They're just machining these castings here, and this is a blast from the past, an old Ace V600. I'm reliably informed about 1990, but all loaded up, and guess what? Micro lock, there you go. Super accurate, repeatable, accurate, nice and easy to use, and still going strong, holding tolerances. Now, in the background though, guess what? Getting a theme here, automation. Nakamura AS200, nice little fixed head machine there, going strong. We've been here approximately, or I think we've probably outstayed our welcome, have we, Chris? You're not supposed to agree with, with, with me on that one, if I can say it properly. I've been going all day, every day. I've not seen any man manual intervention apart from when we walk past the lodge. Chris, don't go too far. There you go, because that will slow it down or turn it off. But loading it up, you can see the configuration there. there. Billets, finished parts. But on the other side, when that's, when that's full up with finished components, swing it round. All the billets are there, ready to machine. You can't see it, but on the other side. So keeping that spindle, oh, that's, yeah, that spindle turning? No, spindle's turning. That spindle turning. That spindle turning. Right, come on. So, next, that's three-axis mill, fixed head. Next, you have the sliders. So, we've got an old Syncom here. Ooh, I'm thinking about 20 years old. Still going strong. That's key to these sliders, all of them. Longevity, powerful, strong. Running parts all day, every day. This one, batches in brass. Oh, turn over. I don't want to give away the game there. Oh, don't turn it. Oh, he's blimey. Turn away, Chris. Turn away. It's like catching someone in the shower, not a pleasant thought, depending on who it is. 20,000 parts, brass, very nice, all day, every day, fully paid for, making money. That's their oldest citizen, uh, sorry, star machine, 1999, still holding tolerances. Obviously not as fast as the newer machines, and as, and as I understand it, two more on the way. So again, Rotec doing very well. Parts, we need to see some sliding head parts, because that's key to what these machines make. Now, I can't show them all. I know you're getting bored of me saying NDA, don't even know what NDA stands for. Any clues, Chris? Oh dear. Yeah, that's why he's behind the camera, not in front of it. Now, no, can't show that part. I do apologise. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Now. No. Oh, yes, actually. Very simple part. This has got a sliding head written all over it. So, cut the radius. Oh, there you go, Chris. Work your... Come on, show off with your new camera. So, radius. Chamfered. Drilled through the middle. Nice and simple. Knocking those all that, out all day, every day. I'd say less than a minute cycle time. Nice and simple, but well, that's perfect for slider. Next, come on. A little bit boring that part. Don't, don't, don't want to insult anybody, but next we have NDAs, gear hobbing. Now don't get too close because we can't show these, but you've got a gear hobbing tool in there, but we can show this one part and hopefully you've got that in there. So yes, it is a gear. They've got a number of different gears on the machine. And what happened here? They needed, uh, Rotec needed a bit of support, so they went to Star GB, who went to Star Switzerland, who, because of their experience in gear cutting, watchmaking, etc., were able to help and give a solution for those. And real tight tolerances on the parts we can't see, which isn't really very helpful, but that's the way it goes. Right, next, 
if I shout down that, sorry Chris, I probably just deafened him there. This part, again, perfect. So great surface finish there. Wobble broached, but is that thread cut or is it thread rolled? It's actually thread rolled to give a stronger thread. So you're not cutting the material as such. So they've got a thread rolling system in that machine. What else have we got? We've got any more we could showcase? I don't think we can, but did you count how many sliders they've got, Chris? Go on, how many? You can't even tell us. He's lying, because I know he hasn't counted. Oh, actually, whoa, hold on. Perfect part for a slider, a bigger part, so these would be fairly small. A bigger part there. Fixed head, you're going three times D. That is more than three times D. Threaded, milled, drilled. Perfect and quite a tough material. Ian, I can't remember, but it's a tough, tough material. But this, these sliders are perfect for long, long parts. In fact, the two new machines, long parts catches. So when I say long, you know, this sort of length, that's not very technical, I know. So let's move on. Mind the guys, mind the guys. That's all right. Just ruin the whole show, why don't you? <laughs> there we have it. Right, nearly there on the sliders. A very simple part, bit of brass. Again, not very complex, but perfect for a sliding head. Knocking these out all day, every day. I'm going to guess at 40 seconds maximum on those parts. So there you go, there you have it. Right, so now let's go. So, right, we'll avoid Paul the boss because he's busy. He's busy having a chat with Ollie, who runs a five axis milling, having his lunch. All right there, Paul, all right there, Ollie. Now you've got Nakamura's. This is your mill turn machines. That one there, a bit of robot loading. But what I want to do is we've got two more NTRX 300s. So Milton, gentleman here, is currently he's got his head in the machine. He will ignore us, hopefully. Now, just looking in there, huge, huge envelope, full B axis, obviously, then a C axis, twin spindle, chucks, uh, the diameter there, you could take 12 inches, which by my calculation, about 300 mil, but as good, all good engineers, they've snuck it past that occasionally, but don't quote me on that. Now, you'll notice on this one, B axis on this machine. Come on, Chris. B axis on that one, same machine but slightly different configuration. A smaller B axis, both going plus or minus 120, so you can get some real complex parts. But smaller one means you can get into those tighter spaces, so you can do more complex parts. But parts of machining on these with the twin spindles, long parts. So a nice selection just down here. What I'll do is I'll grab this one. It is super heavy. I'm making it look light, obviously. So there you go. So they're holding it on the ID and then turning it all the way down and milling it, threading it. There you go, but look at this for pièce de résistance. Can I say pièce de résistance? Do you speak French, Chris? Mais non. Look at this. So, how is that for a mill turned or turn mill part? What they've done on this, one thing specifically, bored that out down there. Now this is extremely um, tricky material. Now they bored it through the, they drilled it through the middle. They had a big U drill. Rather than just plowing straight through it and putting the head under a lot, a lot of pressure, they've actually got the B and the C axis moving like that. So they're taking out sort of steps at a time just to keep it less pressure on the machine. Obviously, make it keep it running. And then once they once they've done the sort of roughing out, go, come through with a big boring bar. But look at the complexity of that component. Absolute perfection. So there you have it. Now that is. Oh, I've got a bit of sweat on that. She's quite warm. How are you doing, Chris? I haven't worked you too hard. Good lad. This is all about Rotec Engineering investing to keep not only up with the competition, ahead of the competition, all about automation. Pretty much every step we've seen here, it's about skilled engineers using their skills, not just loading billets all day, every day. They don't want to be doing that. They want to be using their skills. So let the robots do the talking and let the engineers do them well programming, whatever it might be. There you have it, a great, great machine shop, Rotec Engineering in Evesham.